understand how important this game is to our team and to our you know our fan base and um, I thought our coaching staff did a really good job of staying focused and I certainly uh, I never had a moment where I was thinking ahead I, I just know that's so dangerous I, I've just I've coached long enough to where I just um, I can't make I can't even let myself do that. So I knew I wasn't going to be a problem. <laughs> but uh, I just thought everybody did a super job of preparing. You know, I thought all the, uh, I thought just about every one of our units um, uh, played, played well. Played well. It was, it was just a good day. Good day. Um, the Southeastern Conference Championship, first of all, stands alone as a very important event. Uh, the chance to get back to Atlanta is fantastic and uh, to have a chance to win to win our league in any year is, is huge and uh, that means a lot to us. And what happens beyond that, of course, you know, will be decided by the voters and all that kind of thing, but it does look like that uh, the winner of the game, depending on what happens the rest of the day, um, if, it, if it is Alabama, and uh, the winners more than likely going to go play for the national championship. So that's something exciting to think about. But um, again, um, SEC championships are hard to come by. And uh, bottom line is we're just excited about the opportunity to do that too. Mark, losing the toss today didn't it kind of help you. You kind of made a statement with your offense right from the get-go and getting that kind of team down. Well, it, it is good if you, if, you, if you score points early. You know, just seven points first drive is, is nothing to get them out of their plan, but it was the beginning of uh, <clears throat> of trying to get them out of their plan. When you, when you get, uh, you know, a two or three touchdown lead and, uh, and, and you played a lot of football, then it's, it's tougher for them to be patient with, with what they like to do. And I, I thought, I don't think until the second half when we got to 35, was it a time where they had to start, you know, thinking about doing something a little bit different? But because uh, you know, we all know in 2008 we were up 28, 12, or whatever it was, and they stayed with their game plan and did some big runs, and before you know it, uh, they're right back in it, took the lead, and won it. So um, I knew it would take a lot for them to to try to to think about changing what they normally like to do. So in that respect, the uh, play by Rambo there on the goal line on the Tech's first drive, that really had to be a huge boost for you it's guys. Huge. Any turnover that you get just steals a possession from them. And, and there aren't a lot of possessions in this game compared to other ones because they grind the clock so much. And um, it's, it's hard to get off the field when they're out there on offense. It's, it's hard. But somewhere along the way, you hope there's a turnover, you hope there's some kind of penalty or or some kind of, uh, uh, you know, even like when the ball got snapped over the head or whatever, you know, you hope for those things to happen as they're methodically moving it down the field. It's hard to go, you know, 8, 10, 12 plays, drive 75, 80 yards for a touchdown, but they're, they're really one of the best teams in the country at doing that. Uh, one of the reasons is they're, they're willing to go for on fourth down a lot, and, and they normally make it. So um, it's just hard to stop them without a turnover, without a penalty, without something like that, because they're just they're so good at what they do. Coach, you guys break the record for points in a season. How good is this offense uh, since you've been here, and how do you think that will fare against the top ranked defense like Alabama? Well, I think they're I think they've done a very good job this year, no doubt. I mean, to, to break a school record is a big deal, and and, it, and it's. Uh, you know, and it's what are we, 12 games into the year. Usually, you know, nowadays they count bowl games and all that kind of thing. So um, to do that with still a game or two games uh, out ahead of us is, is very good. Um, you know, I don't even want to talk about this next game too much right now. I want to start looking at film and then I can give you a better answer about how I think we might do. Mark, since midway the halftime of Florida, Aaron has been incredibly efficient. Is he doing anything different, or just doing yeah. what you're telling him? Well, he's just—he—he's um, a—he's a very good leader for us. He's 
really good at preparing himself and, and, and preparing his teammates uh, to be able to execute what Coach Bubble wants to try to get accomplished and the offensive staff is trying to get accomplished. He, he does get us in the right play a lot. Um, he gets us in the right protection a lot. And because of that, we're not just guessing up there. Sometimes if you just, I think the days of calling a play and running it and hoping you're right, uh, I think those days are gone. I think you've got to have a way to try to see what the defense intentions are and then try to run the best possible play. And then, you, then it's still hard as heck to execute. But if you try to execute a play that really has no chance, um, it's just tough, but he's good at that. He's been been very accurate. Um, he, he's uh, he's not really throwing the ball up for grabs much in his career. Uh, certainly not much this year. But uh, I don't know. He, he just he's doing well. I'm happy for him. It's good for us. Good for him. Mark, you got a group of seniors who are either red shirts or, or being recruited in preseason number one back in '08. You know, they've kind of had some struggles a couple of years, oh, yeah. but now they're back in this opportunity. What can you say about this class and what they've done? I'm just happy for them. They, they did a super job. The seniors this year, they really did want to take it in their hands. Um, once everybody decided to stick around, and, you know, most of those guys on defense, because there really aren't many seniors on offense, it's mostly it's a senior-laden defensive team. and. You know, Jarvis is not a senior, but he is a fourth-year player and a third-year player here at Georgia. And I, I think when Jarvis said, let's stay, he said, I'm staying. And he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't necessarily tell the other guys to stay because that's not the way Jarvis is. He wants them to make their own decision. But I think when Jarvis said, I'm staying, I'm staying because I love Georgia. I'm staying because I think I can get better. I'm staying because I think we can do something big here. I think it gave everybody else confidence to stick around as well. And, and so when they did decide to stay, they really had a very strong vested interest in, in how this season went. And, um, and and when Sean Williams saw it kind of slipping away, he had to say something about it. And uh, so he steps up and uh, challenges everybody. Made some guys mad, made some guys, hurt some guys' feelings, but I think he I think he just couldn't stand it. He couldn't stand what he was seeing. And, uh, and, but I, and I think everybody respected him for what he did. They might not have liked what he did, but I think they agreed with his, uh, his assessment of what was going on. And then it just it lit a fire under the guy. So when you're, I guess the point I'm making is when your seniors uh, are get involved like that as leaders, it makes a big difference. And, and the last thing, was our summer workouts were by far the best we've had because of the organization. <laughs> that Murray, Murray's not a senior, but again, he's a fourth-year guy. He's already graduated from this program. But, but he and the other seniors and leaders uh, divided up and said, you know, we're going to take X amount of guys per guy, and, and we're going to lead those groups, kind of sub-teams, sub-groups. And we're going to hold everybody accountable to having the best summer workout we could possibly have. And made some good changes in the strength staff. And uh, just all everything kind of came together. But it, it was very player-driven type of a season, which is what we hope for as coaches. And uh, just real proud of them. You talk a lot about, Coach, about being proud for the players getting a shot. What about you? You've come pretty close. I mean, uh, isn't this what you're in the game for? Oh, yeah, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. But I enjoy watching them have fun, really. I mean, when we have victories, I enjoy watching them celebrate, you know. Now I'll jump in there and have some fun with them, too. But, um, uh, you know, I, I've, I've lived through a couple of them, um, and I know it's a great time, and it's a lot of fun. But um, am I happy? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm excited about the future, but um, I really do get, I really do enjoy other, uh, these young guys and these other coaches maybe that I've never experienced before get a chance to see what it's like. Mark, uh, Alec Ogletree had three or high 15 tackles. It must be special to have a linebacker like that with that right. foot speed to get out on yeah. wide pitches and everything. Exactly. I mean, he, he's kind of just tailor-made for this type of a defense. And uh, he can run sideline to sideline. And, and you got to have somebody who can do that to make those kind of hits. And, and, of course, there was some up the gut that he got involved with it as well. But a lot of the scheme is – uh, for our defensive ends to stop the dive and not so much the middle linebacker. The middle linebacker was act, act, actually able to um, 
you know, play a lot of the quarterback and pitch stuff, excuse me, and um, so for him to be able to fly like he can fly, it's just hard uh, for them to get the edge. Early in the game, they're out, you know, those speed sweeps, they're doing a good job of getting the edge. And a couple options, uh, you know, got some good yards, but, but overall, Jarvis' speed, excuse me, uh, uh, Overtree's speed really was a huge factor. Mark, can you talk about the offense since the Florida game, just how explosive you guys have been? Okay, I'll do that. Uh, I think they've done great. I think they've done great. I'm proud of them. Uh, Coach Bowles had a good plan week by week. And um, I don't know, we, we've got a tremendous uh, camaraderie, not only with the offense, but with, with the defense as well. We've got coaches that really get along with each other, guys that just believe in each other and uh, work well together. Our offensive and defensive coordinators get after each other in the spring and the fall, but uh, once we're on the same team, they really, uh, I think they admire each other as far as how uh, diligent they are and what good coaches they are. And our players believe in them. So uh, we, we just got a team that really is enjoying each other's company and uh, we're just, just working hard together. It's been good. Did you see this early in the season that uh, you'd be where you are today, that the team had that potential? Well, I saw that we had the I, I knew we had the potential. I, I just didn't know if I was going to see it come to fruition. It was, um, you know, especially defensively, we just, we just started slow. We just were not. Um, playing with the edge that we're playing now. And, um, you know, there's, there's some reasons that you could say why, but I'm thankful that we did turn the corner and now we're, we're playing the kind of ball that you got to play to have a chance this time of year. And um, so hopefully we can keep it going. <laughs> Excuse me. Talk a lot earlier about the seniors. What was the emotion of this day like, especially before the game at that ceremony? Well, quite frankly, it went, it, it, it went too fast. Um, I should have slowed down. Um, you know, we're, we're, we have a group of guys and we're trying to take pictures. It, it just it went too quick. And when we were done, I looked at the clock, we were still seven and a half minutes before the game. So we just went too fast. I went too fast through everybody. And I just apologize for that. And I wish I had taken more time with each family. But I felt like in years past, sometimes it was a rushed event. We're trying to get the game started and all that kind of deal. And, and our game, our senior awards banquet is, is a phenomenal event, and that's when we can really take time to honor these guys. But if I had to do it over again, I'd, I'd have taken about another 30 seconds per group, you know, or 15 seconds or whatever per, per family because I feel like I rushed through it too much. But I think, I mean, it's, I think everybody enjoyed it. It is uh, an emotional time. I think for the parents, too, they, they're like, man, this is over already because they, they usually have, a lot of times they have more fun than the players do. Um, just enjoying their boys playing for the dogs. And, uh, and like I said before, you know, once a dog, always a dog. But it's a little bit different once your son moves on. It's, uh, you don't get the free tickets anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, people around the league have, have said that you guys are bigger physically, that you have 6'1 corners, 220-pound running backs, that you're a a bigger, more physical team, more like LSU, Alabama. Mm -hmm. How did that happen in the last several years? Well, you recruit it. You try to recruit guys that have certain size, you know, you know, height and length of arms, and there's certain parameters you're trying to go for. But there, there's still some really talented guys that may not fit the mold just just right. But uh, that's part of it. The other part of it is how we develop them here. I think we do as good a job as anybody with our strength and conditioning, our nutrition, um, uh, just, you know, how we go about our business. But, you know, this, this defense is very grown up. I mean, there's a bunch of seniors on this defense. They've had, you know, you know, three years, most all of them have had at least three years in the system. And, you know, if you watch some teams, and, or if you, even, if you throw a freshman out there as talented as they are, well, they look skinny compared to these guys, because they haven't had enough time in our system to, to grow and mature. So um, I think it's a combination of the guys we're targeting and then what we do with them once they get here. Did you change anything with strength and conditioning to get bigger physical? Well, we have. Well, um, I just think we got, we got pretty big 
kid, you know, you signed some guys with good frames and, and you got something to work with. But certainly our strength and conditioning staff has done a good job. But, you know, we got some old school, good old hard core weightlifting stuff that puts the muscle mass on the guys. But we've also, we got, uh, we got Sherman in here that uh, is our speed guy. And, uh, and Justin came in with some mixed martial arts stuff. And, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a good um, combination and variation of ways to train. I think it's been really good for our guys. Coach, what's the latest? Your team is uh, performing going to this year's SEC title game, the total last year against LSU. Any kind of comparison at all? You're about the, the team as a whole, how you're playing right now going to Yeah, I, you know, I don't even remember how we were playing a year ago going into that game. Uh, but, I, you know, I felt like we had, a, you know, we, had a, we had a good chance of winning it. We just didn't. Didn't play very well in the second half, obviously, but um, I mean, it just matters how we play this Saturday, really. Just what I was just going to ask you: what What are the logistics this week? Anything different in terms of preparation? Do you get really do every can't. effort to make it just the same? Well, you, we can't really do much different. Uh, it's a 20-hour rule. We're in class. You know, last week there was no class. You know, we had some we had the ability to do really whatever we wanted to do with time, but we really can't very much off of our system, the way it's set up, because we feel like every minute is precious. Everything we do has a purpose, whether it's meeting or whether it's you know field time or weight room time. I mean, the, the countable minutes uh, are all accounted for, and we think every single one of them is very important. So I don't even know what we can do to change it. One more question, anybody? Right, given, given the nature of, of Tech's offense, as you mentioned earlier, kind of being this grind out team, did you feel like this is about as efficient as you guys have done on offense this season as far as possessions are concerned? As far as, well, you know, early on we did. I, I think we were uh, scoring, we scored every drive in the first half except the one. And, uh, and, and we're scoring touchdowns. That's what you got to do. You got to score touchdowns. If we just kick field goals, um, those first drives that we scored touchdowns, it had been a very close game, and you know who knows how the outcome would have went. But uh, when you're scoring points and uh, the points are touchdowns, it, it gave us the separation, so that was really good. Thanks.